Hey everybody, this is Pippin with PippinsPlugins.com, and in this episode 4 of Plugin Thoughts, I want to talk to you about learning how Core does it. As a plugin developer, it's really, really important to know and understand how things work and why things work inside of WordPress Core. Let's take, for example, a, a WordPress plugin that uses Ajax to process a request on the front end. Well, if you run into problems processing your Ajax request, it's really, really helpful to understand how WordPress processes the Ajax request inside of the backend, in the admin. How does it do it inside of the core files? Well, if you run into a problem processing your Ajax request, it's going to be a lot easier to solve that problem if you understand how the core system works. So I'm going to walk through and kind of give you an example of this. I have a little plugin that I've written called Love It. And it adds a little link at the bottom of your post called Love It that allows you to love a post, much like you would like a post with the Facebook Like button. Um, when you click it, it processes, processes your request via Ajax. And then if everything is successful, it increments the love count, stores the post ID in the user meta, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, let me show you a really common problem that happens when working with Ajax in WordPress plugins. And here it is. You click Love It, and it comes back and says zero. Well, what in the world does zero mean? It's an extremely uninformative error that unless you know exactly why zero is displayed, you really have no idea why it's showing zero. So it's really, really helpful here if you understand where does zero come from? Why does WordPress send me zero instead of the response I was expecting? Um, another situation is let's say you are not logged in um, if you're not familiar with it, WordPress has a way that it processes Ajax requests for non-logged in users and then a different way it processes them for logged in users. So now I'm logged out and I click love it and I see minus one. Well, where in the world does that one come from? First I saw zero and now I see minus one. This is really, really strange. Well, it's actually really quite simple, but it requires that you understand how WordPress processes the Ajax request. And all of this happens inside of admin-ajax.php. So what you want to do in these kind of scenarios is you want to go and explore those core files and understand how they work. Um, someone at WordCamp San Diego over this last weekend said that all WordPress plugin developers should have an understanding of the way that core works. I could not agree more. So I want to encourage you to do this, um, and I'll kind of walk you through a sample of one way that you can do it and how it really, really helps. So we have this scenario where we're processing Ajax and we get a zero or a negative one error. We don't know where these come from. Well, first of all, let me give you a little bit of background information on the plugin. When the Love It link is clicked, uh, the plugin does a little Ajax processing right here, and we send an action name to WordPress called Love It, and in this case it's Love It Wrong, uh, which I've just changed just as an example. The actual action name is love it. But for the sample, I'm going to leave it as love it wrong. And we use the jQuery post to send our information to WordPress. And then we uh, do inf we do th certain tasks if that information comes back as we expect, which is loved. And if it doesn't, then we're just going to show that error just to s show that something went wrong. Um, and that's and then actually inside of elsewhere in the plugin, we have actually attached a function LIP process love to our WP Ajax functions. Um, I'm not, if you're not familiar with how all this works, I recommend that you go, I have a couple tutorials on how WordPress, uh, in how Ajax works in WordPress plugins. And I would recommend you go and read through those and then have a listen to this because that would kind of help. Um, but anyway, so we have a function attached to our Ajax and we send that Ajax via our jQuery. And now on our front end, we get this. So where does this come from? We really want to know. Well, the way that you do this is you go and find the core file that processes the Ajax. And when you do that, one thing that's really helpful to do is we see we get negative one. So let's just search for negative one. Where does negative one get shown? Well, it gets shown right here. And if we read up a little bit, we see that if is set post action and action equals autosave. Well, we know that our action doesn't equal autosave. So we're going to go ahead and find next. We're going to skip over that one. And now we see over here, die negative one. So let's look at this. And we see if not empty request action. So this is the action that we've sent via jQuery right here. If it's not empty, we're going to run do action WP Ajax, no privilege, which stands for no privileges or not logged in. And then the name of the action. 
Well, let's look back at our plugin for a second and we see WP Ajax no priv underscore love underscore it. So that's our action name. So we're running that action right here. Well, inside of that action, we are dying at the very end. This is something that you always need to do. Um, so if this function runs correctly, this is never going to be outputted. But it is being outputted. So what does that tell us? That tells us that do action is not being run, pro it's not actually finding the action hook that we're trying to run. So that means our action is probably wrong. Okay, well, think about it for a second. We know that this only outputs if our action name is wrong. Well, we know our action name here, and we know our action name here, so that means one of them is wrong. Oh, sure enough, it is, because here we have love it wrong. Refresh that, go over here, try this out, and look at that, it works. No error, and our counter is incremented. So that's really cool. Um, that's really, really useful to know exactly where that error comes from. Uh, I have, I'm not kidding, when I've spent hours and hours and hours trying to work through these bugs. I did tons and tons of Google searching on negative one errors when using WordPress and Ajax, and I never really found good answers to it. Um, but the moment I looked into admin Ajax.php and looked at the way that Core does it, it makes perfect sense because all I need to know here now is, oh, something is wrong. My action name is not getting interpreted. So that means most likely that either my name here is wrong or my name here is wrong. And sure enough, that's almost always the case. Let's look at one more little example. Here I'm logged in and I click love it and I see zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a search for zero just like we did negative one here. Find out where we find this. Well, this is actually gonna be pretty unhelpful because we find a whole bunch of them as you can see here. So let's look instead, how, what is, how does this file work? Well, we see right here, we're doing a switch, action equals get action and it's going through a whole bunch of case statements. So basically, if the action equals this, we're gonna do this. If the action equals this, we're gonna do this. Okay, well, that's not what we want. So let's keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, and now we see switch action post. Well, in this case, our action is a post variable, so this is closer to what we want. Our, we're not doing delete comment, we're not doing any of these. So let's just scroll all the way to the bottom to get to the default case statement, because this is actually what we want. And we see do action WP Ajax post action. So this is going to run WP Ajax, the name of your action. If it doesn't run, we're gonna die and echo out zero. That's exactly what we have. So we know that our action name here or here is probably wrong. Well, we already know this because I already showed you with the no privilege version for non-logged in users. So let's simply change this make sure it matches, which we see WP Ajax, love it, and we see love it right here. And remember, the WP Ajax part is appended, is, or sorry, prepended uh, to the do action itself, so you don't ever add that yourself. So now, what's gonna happen? Well, we see do action is gonna run. We think our action name is getting posted correctly. So if it runs, this is never gonna be displayed because our function dies here before this is ever reached. Let's try it out. Let's refresh the page, click love it, and sure enough, the counter increments, and we do not get an error. So this is really, really cool because having an understanding of the way that Core does it makes problems like this much, much easier to debug and eventually solve. Um, now that I have an understanding of how the, the WordPress Ajax file works, I'm typically able to solve these problems when I get negative one or zero in a couple of minutes because I immediately know this is how it works in Core. So that means I'm missing something, or I, I've, I have a typo or something like that wrong. But if you don't understand where zero or negative one is coming from, it could take hours. And I'm serious when I, when I tell you, it did take me hours to eventually figure that out. I eventually got smart and just went and explored the admin Ajax file to figure out how it works. Once I understood how it works, it was much, much easier. Now, not only is it going to be easier to solve problems with an understanding of core. It's also easier to write higher quality plugins if you understand how core works. I would recommend any time that you're writing a plugin, let's take for an example something that does some modification in the media library. Go explore the core files for the media library and see how they do things. See what other options they give. 
there are a lot of actions and filters that you can tie into with your plugin available for the media library. There's actually lots and lots of them. I was kind of surprised when I opened up the media file libraries the other day and looked. And most of them you've never even heard of. But if you know that they're there, all of a sudden the quality and the kind of plugin that you can write is much, much higher. So my advice to you, understand how Core works. You don't need to know how every single line works. Just every time you're writing a plugin, go and look at the necessary part of Core or the relevant part of Core and understand how that area works. Over time, you're going to under realize that your knowledge of Core has expanded dramatically. And that in turn can lead to you being able to submit actual bug reports and patches to the core WordPress code, which is something that every developer should, um, should aspire to. I have yet to submit my first official patch to core, and that kind of makes me sad because I've worked with WordPress for four or five years now. But by having an understanding of core, that becomes much, much easier to do because you can suddenly know where the problem is and how to solve it. So understand how core works. Thanks for listening.